Hardline Hindu gangs harass couples on Valentine's Day. For years, hardline Hindu gangs have become inf infamous in India for patrolling the streets and assaulting and harassing couples seen on Valentine's Day, sometimes even forcing them to get married. This year was no exception. On February 14th, group members of Bajring Dal were booked for allegedly harassing couples in public places. Sudhir Kumar Singh, a police officer from Agra's police department, said that a first information report was filed against the members for harassment. According to the local news, the group was against Valentine's Day separations and stopped couples from observing it. Uh, Avtar Singh Gil, a member of Bajrang Dal, said, quote, This is a Western culture which is flourishing in India, but it will not be allowed to flourish here. A number, another member of Bajrang Dal claimed that Valentine's Day is quote unquote forcibly imposed on India by multinational companies. The group demanded that the Telangana state government declare February 14th as Amar Jarwan Divas or Our Soldier Day, referring to India's 1971 victory against Pakistan during the Indo-Pakistan Indo War. So. I wanted to cover this because um, one, oh, and in, in our thumbnail, you see we have a picture of there were also a burning effigies of St. Valentine. <laughs> They're burning Valentines? And they They're have a like. Burning St. Valentine himself, man. <laughs> oh my God. Um, what, did, what did he do? I, he's he's, he's the not originator of this Western depravity. <laughs> He didn't start Sorry, Valentine's say, Day. Okay, Hindutva but... <laughs> won't give us a breather even for one week. Come on, guys. Be civil for one week. Not that hard. Well, I wanted to cover this because I was actually imp Oh, wait. We have a puppy. We need to pause and appreciate the puppy. <laughs> Stop everything. <laughs> That's okay. She's still wearing her dress? Yes. No, Aww. she... Yeah. I, don't, I don't put the dress on. I don't. I don't. Oh, <laughs> she doesn't mind it. Oh my God! What a cute baby. Um, hey, hey. All right. Bring it back to me. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oops. Here we go. Uh, blank name is saying this is a long way of saying that I don't get laid. <laughs> true. True. <laughs> um. So. And, uh, Mustafa is saying, there's a great Bollywood movie in this story. It just needs a little Hindutva member finding love in a musical number at the end. Honestly, you're not wrong. Um, so what I found interesting about this is the fact, and what I wanted to highlight, is there. I saw a number of news stories, not just talking about the fact that there are gang members doing this kind of activity in India, but there are actually, they're being arrested and they're being booked for their activities. And there was a lot of reports about measures that police were taking preemptively against these people. So I would like to congratulate that. That's awesome. I also wanted to talk about this because a lot of aspects of this kind of story that happens every year, really, it blows my mind. So I was talking to a friend in India and she says, oh yeah, when it's Valentine's Day, if you're a woman, you know just, you don't go out. You don't go out. And if you're, even if you're going out, like, with a male friend, who's not even, not even a couple, you do, by under no circumstances, you do not go out with another man, period, on Valentine's Day. That's asking for trouble. Amazing. And I thought this is absolutely insane. I'm like, how is Bajrang Dal not declared a terrorist organization? Or a, or a criminal organized gang that every year you expect and anticipate that you cannot go out in public because of the activity of these people, because that's how predictable it is. Where is your right to free assembly? Where is your freedom of movement if this is the case and this is so predictable that you know that this is going to happen year after year? That's, that's well. completely unacceptable to me. Um, well, I don't think this would be assembly, but yeah, freedom to move freely and just have fun. Well, no, they go after couples in parks. They go after couples in particular romantic spots. Right. Um, the, I mean, th this is this is just 
we need to highlight more of these because they're doing a very good job in making sure that the world realizes that Hinduism is not this whole exotic, peaceful <laughs> religion, unlike the other Abrahamic ones. You know what I mean? Like they are, they are, they're perfect for highlighting how insane all of this is, right? Like how bad India has become. We need to like raise the alarm, right? Like to globally and embarrass them for this. I mean, this is yeah. like, this is Sharia. This is Hindu Sharia. And Apparently again, it's a, oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, well, and again, like, it's a lot worse in some areas than others. Like, I've heard that it's bad in Rajasthan. Wouldn't it be the worst in, is it really bad in Uttar Pradesh? I would assume that there would be the worst. It happens all over. I don't know where it's the worst. Yeah. Um, but again, like, imagine being one of these people. Couples trying to have fun, enjoying their lives and being romantic with each other. And you're against that, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, again, like, we should have the meme ready. Like, are we the baddies meme? We don't have Yes, it where is it? I was counting on you. <laughs> <laughs> we should have had Oh, wait, Dee is correcting me. She's saying, Susanna, no, Susanna, they're not aware of St. Valentine. They were just burning Valentine. I researched this. <laughs> Oh, Thank so that's just Valentine. Okay, so they don't know Saint, Saint Valentine. They did. That's just Val. That's just the face of Valentine. As a yeah, and they were like okay. burning Valentine's Day cards. Okay. okay. Um, Amazing. Yeah. So another member of Bajrang Dal claimed that Valentine's Day is forcibly imposed on India by multinational companies. These companies want people to celebrate a Western culture so they can make money on greeting cards and private album songs. He explained. <laughs> I love this forcibly imposed by national multinational companies. But how? But how is it imposed? Like you guys don't celebrate Valentine's Day. By what authority? Coming... No, like how is it forced? Like did anybody come to any of you guys and told you that you have to? I mean, <laughs> I mean, this coming from the same some. I mean, I don't know if all of them, but pre-arranged marriage is like kind of forced romance or it's like forcing people to be together like do you expect like people who celebrate valentine's day to like find you a date and make you like buy her roses and go on like a valentine's date with them is it like man like you have to buy cards for each other where's the chocolate where's the, where are the roses like how is this forced upon you you don't have to do it none of you have to do it imagine if there was a penalty <laughs> by these these powerful organizations are like, yeah, we're going to find everybody who doesn't celebrate Valentine's Day. What is these people are insane? Um, by these people, I mean specifically these people who are doing this, okay? I'm not talking about all of India or all of Hinduism. Please don't think I'm being racist or anything like that, okay? Um, also, like, wouldn't this be the same, similar to Western countries celebrating Diwali? Right? Right? Like, wouldn't, oh. like, how is... How is, how is, like, day. like if in the United States or in Canada, there's a lot of celebrations of Diwali, nobody is insane enough to claim that this is forced upon us by, I don't know, Indian organizations. Like, like how, how, how is it that we get to be, get to celebrate Diwali in Canada and that's A-OK -okay, and celebrating Christmas or Valentine's Day in India, all of a sudden becomes this conspiracy, or is forced upon you. Like people in Canada who doesn't who don't want to celebrate Diwali, they don't, and people in India who don't want to celebrate Valentine's Day, they they, they won't. But the difference is that not that many people in Canada are butt hurt over <laughs> Diwali. Only <laughs> like, like xenophobes. Like, yeah, but w their their percentage is a lot lower. Like mm -hmm. where where are the mob? Show me the mobs in United States or Canada or in Europe who are like going after and intimidating people who are celebrating Diwali. Like show me that 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 doesn't happen. Okay. If it did happen, what? there would be huge backlash against it because people wouldn't tolerate, especially in Canada, that kind of mm -hmm. open targeting of minorities and xenophobia. Um. That's what I was thinking about today. I was thinking about how, like, I, at least where in, in my environment, people love holy. They love the holy festival and celebration. 
It's so mm -hmm. much fun. People get so excited about it. And they they it, they love having this other celebration in their in their life is is part of something they do every year. It enriches their life to have the celebration from another culture. Um you know, it is uh, represents something very different than in other things in our in our culture, and um, that's it, it's seen as something that people appreciate and and love so much. You know, instead of seeing it as an attack on our culture, unless you're like an ultra nationalist or something, I've which is like way more rare. We see it as mm -hmm. something that is is a celebration of how awesome our community is that we have this that in our in our proximity that we can celebrate it together um it's seen as, as such an addition instead of taking away and attacking yeah cultures are supposed to mix with each other like oh you you western culture enjoy it you enjoy it if you like don't enjoy it if you don't like like you can't you can tell other people what to enjoy okay i personally prefer it if cultures just constantly mix and match with each other it's, it's beautiful right mm -hmm. huh? yeah, we we all california rolls for that right like we took <laughs> japanese we took japanese food and we made it better i um, hate california anyway. rolls how dare you um, <laughs> no, it's love I just, jihad day i think we should have a love jihad day i think we should take this conspiracy and turn it into let's make it a day let's come up with a day and call it love jihad day and it would be a day where any two people, maybe not in India, because I don't want people to, to risk their lives for that. Okay. But sure. I think we should have an international love jihad day. And it would be a day where two people of two different backgrounds, you know, buy gifts from each other, roses, card or something. Right. Or any couple that is, comes from two different backgrounds comes and say, like, um, if they want to openly be like, oh, yes, happy love jihad day to each other. Right. <laughs> So it would be a day of celebrating couples or any, you know, fun and cute, like harmless flirtation between two people who are of different ethnicities or background religions or even current religions, you know, and come like, oh, happy love jihad day to us because we have different backgrounds. Wouldn't that be beautiful? We should make that a day mm -hmm. to celebrate um mixing of ethnicities and cultures with each other we turn it on we, we turn something that was supposed to be a negative and we make it a positive we celebrate people coming of different parts of the world coming together you know i think one I thing think i was thinking you no know, i would i love the idea of this um is it's a you know it's a very um different dynamic for us to say well like oh well you know in our community when we have celebrations from other cultures it's seen as such in a contribution to our quality of life and our like cultural um vibrancy but i you know i was just thinking today about how it's a very different and contentious issue when you're in a post-colonial society and india as a nation is still grappling with you know rediscovering what it is as a civilization after the rule of the british and so western influence has a completely different historical weight to it than just oh this is something that's fun to enjoy whether like no matter where it comes from which is kind of what I think I get to enjoy here is like, oh, well, it doesn't matter where it comes from that much to me. Like, this is something that, you know, is a beautiful culture that I just get to participate in. Um, yeah, I, I think I think it's harder, it's more difficult to really grapple with that contention of post-colonial identity. Um, yeah, I don't know what like a solution to that kind of thing is because it also comes from a sense of like deep insecurity like this is threatening our indian civilizational identity to have this kind of influence which i think is a deeply insecure position to take because india the the culture of the subcontinent is a cultural powerhouse across the globe you can't tell me that the heritage 
and legacy of the civilization that now has over a billion people is under threat in the same way as it, you know, this isn't going anywhere. This isn't going anywhere. <laughs> um, yeah, right. I just, I find it very interesting. Um, can you highlight the four super chats that we have? Well, it's not super chats. Um, yeah, sorry, star. Oh, yeah, we don't have super chats. We're not monetary. <laughs> Forever uh, Stormy is saying if there was a festival of love in Hinduism, they wouldn't stop bragging about how amazing Hinduism is. I mean, I why shouldn't? I mean, if this actually was a dope festival, they should brag about it. That sounds yeah, fun. Yeah. Yeah. Like bragging about Holi or Diwali? No, like, but, that but what, no, I, I mean, their, her, their, her point is like, um, if it's from somewhere else, they wouldn't see the value in it. Like they're just obsessed with things have to be like, it has to be from the subcontinent or else it's like a foreign in cultural invasion or something like that. Yeah. All right. Um, squirrel, squirrel Coney is saying Valentine's Day equals capitalism plus commercialism. Well, t those are two good things. So that makes it even better, I guess. Like, I don't know what do you, I mean, capitalism is, regulated capitalism is a good thing. And I don't know what you're saying plus commercialism. Commercialism is part of capitalism. So I don't know why you had to add uh, that on <laughs> top of it as if it's separate. But commercialism is not necessarily a bad thing. If you have a problem with commercialism, that means you as an individual have failed to control your urges. So that's a you problem rather than a commercialism problem. Okay, so maybe like you fix yourself because commercialism as a whole is a concept of commercializing things that are in demand and people want to buy it for the from the fruits of their labor so i don't see what the problem with that is okay so if you have a problem with that maybe fix yourself but yeah what's the next comment um malik who is a pakistani in our chat is saying damn i'm not even eligible for love jihad day me hand are some of the same ethnicity i don't get it he's saying my he's saying my hand oh. and myself <laughs> <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> <"Where is it?" laughs> damn <laughs> yeah. right. that's hilarious um this one you highlighted earlier but you forgot to read it oh yeah this is just actually. fun benjamin is saying hi i'm on benjamin i'm watching this from ghana africa i'm proud atheist and i must admit it's not easy being an atheist in these kinds of environments well, thank you for joining us. You know, shouts out to Ghana. And I hope that you can find some community here at Atheist Republic if you can't find it, you know, close to you. And holy crap, it's that time. Boom. Bust down the doors. Harris Hatton is here. <laughs> yes. Hi, Harris. He's here. All right, music guy, and I, um, yeah, guys, make sure you, you're subscribed to Harris Sultan channel, okay? If you guys are interested in anything, India or Pakistan or Islam or dinosaur related, you should be subscribed to Harris Sultan's channel, okay? Uh, music guy is saying life would be boring without made up holidays. I don't like the idea of like calling things made up as if like it makes them, okay, like made up holidays as opposed to what like do we have holidays that just that just naturally part of nature like it's part of the least... fabric of the universe to of observe universe, my birthday exactly. i don't know what you're talking about Armin. <laughs> <laughs> the world stops when i was born and we need to remember it mm. um what did you All think right, about this... my thoughts about the uh way that these sorts of things are treated so insecurely in the face of yeah it's, it's 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 basically what you were describing is was the best way of like talking about the inferiority complex right like how insecure do you have to be that you think you're like your culture which is like has survived for thousands of years and is like one of the most dominant cultures on the planet is under threat like how insignificant do you think all of this is like it's, it's inferiority complex that's what all it is like you're yeah. intimidated by the popularity of something of another culture. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. 
We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.